Hi everyone, I'm still Jacob, and this is your weekly entertainment update. We're gonna kick things off today with some local goings on. The Linda Jameson Dance Company of Ottawa will be performing their rendition of Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker at the Algonquin Commons Theatre. Performances run this weekend on December 12th, 13th, and 14th, and tickets are $28.50 each. Or, if you hate Christmas, the Mayfair Theatre will be celebrating this season appropriately with the Rocky Horror Christmas Show. It's a sing-along, people dress up for it, and tickets are only 15 bucks, which is a pretty good deal when you realize that this is one of the only times it's socially acceptable to yell at the screen. I tried doing that once at a theater, but uh, they, don't, they don't let me there anymore. I mean, penguins in Madagascar? <laughs> I don't think so. This week in music, I can't talk about anything else because ACDC just released a new album. But for some reason, they didn't release the album on cassette, which is ridiculous because I need it for my Walkman because what year is it? But the album, named Rock or Bust, has been pretty well received, receiving three and a half stars in Rolling Stone, which, yeah, that sounds about right for ACDC. Maybe with this album, the band can inspire whole new generations of people. Probably not, though. The gaming world's everlasting struggle for legitimacy was written a new chapter last week with the Game Awards. Here's a quick rundown of who won what. Best Independent Game went to the impressively retro side-scroller Shovel Knight. Best Performance went to Trey Parker for his performance in South Park The Stick of Truth, and he says it better than I ever could. Because only in video games can Trey Parker beat out Kevin Spacey for acting. And of course, Dragon Age Inquisition went home with the big Game of the Year award. There's a bunch that I didn't mention, but the full list of award winners can be seen at thegameawards.com slash nominees. Overall, the night seemed like a step in the right direction for gaming, not that the bar was very high to begin with. I mean, what did we have before this? The Spike Video Game Awards? Things are just getting started, and not just inside the folds of my adult diaper. <sighs> Gross. A ton of casting announcements were made in the last couple of weeks for upcoming comic book movies. First was last week's Suicide Squad lineup, which is slated to come out just before DC's Justice League movie. All the way in 2016, we can look forward to Jared Leto as the Joker, which will probably add more fuel to the fire over who did it better. It was Mark Hamill, obviously. Cara Delevingne as the Enchantress. Will Smith as Deadshot, because clearly this is the face of the world's deadliest assassin. <laughs> Australian actor Jai Courtney as Boomerang, obviously. Tom Hardy as Rick Flagg, Tom Hardy already being a veteran of DC movies. Of course. And finally, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, who's already shown experience with being romantically involved with psychopaths, as she showed in The Wolf of Wall Street. So we've only got two short years before this movie premieres, and with Batman v Superman on the horizon, is DC finally going to capture some of that Marvel magic, or are we just gonna get another five Batman movies before they try again? Speaking of Marvel, Ryan Reynolds confirmed last week that he is on board to play Deadpool in the eponymous movie, also coming out in 2016. This came as a surprise to no one since several months ago, test footage of Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool was leaked on the internet around the time of San Diego Comic-Con. Grimes the disease, meet the cure. Okay, not the cure, but more like a topical ointment that reduces swelling and itch. Hi, Tom. Just call me. What are the odds, right? And everyone was like, oh, why isn't this a movie? Well, guess what? It is. Joke's on us, I guess. Also, Reynolds already played Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine, but uh, we don't talk about that. Hopefully Deadpool will do more good for Ryan Reynolds' career than the Green Lantern did. We don't talk about that one either. And as another little treat this week, the title of the new James Bond movie was revealed, as well as a short... I hesitate to call it a teaser because as I'm talking, literally the whole thing just played. That's all of it. Anyway, the movie's called Spectre, but the best news I've heard is that Christoph Waltz, known for his roles in Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained, is slated to star. Not as James Bond, I should have been clear. That's still Daniel Craig, but it's still cool. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna spend my holiday just watching two weeks of Netflix. But for you guys, Sabrina and Nick are gonna help you spread some holiday cheer.